chapter number 23. I want to thank God for Jessica and Maya being here in church today. We were up there with uh, Miguel in the hospital, and they told me, they said um, I think they, came, they came home last night so they could sleep in their own bed. I think they tried the chair thing. It didn't work before, but uh, they said, before we go back up, we're going to be in church. And uh, kept a promise. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. I know, uh, Jessica, you made Maya be here, so that's good. Amen. Drag her. Yeah. <laughs> I've been picking on her all this time. Actually, I was picking on Brother Miguel. You know, he's got this rag on his head to keep him cool. And uh, it started twisting a little bit yesterday. And I said, let me straighten your wig out here. <laughs> we had some fun. He, on, on the day before, he couldn't recognize too much anybody. And then yesterday we had conversation, we had time to laugh, and he told me what was going on, so he knew what was happening to him. But uh, but the other day, I'll be honest, I went home and I told the wife, I said, he don't look good. And when I got through yesterday, I was like, that's the Miguel, I know a little bit. We laughed and had some fun. I said, I said, dear God, I hope he forgets everything I did to him yesterday <laughs> when he comes up. <laughs> I, something tell me Maya will remind him, so. Don't worry. Matter of fact, I said, when you get up from here because Maya's been acting up, I'll hold her while you beat her. And uh, we did. We had fun yesterday. So I tell you that because I just showed you what the power of prayer can do. That was just overnight. That was, that was overnight. And because I saw him and, and I knew he wasn't with me because I said, brother, I was expecting you to uh, stand up and preach this Sunday. And he said, and I'm saying, you don't preach. <laughs> So I knew he wasn't with me. And, uh, but then yesterday when I said, I said, so now you're going to take your turn preaching, he looked at me like, <laughs> now you're back on course, amen. That's a I'm just telling you, I, I, I watched God, boy, I watched God do something. Um, they didn't know, and they still don't fully know what's going on, but, um, but uh, they didn't know if he'd still be with us. That's how bad that was. And so uh, thank God for, Miss, like I said, Miss Jessica, I know she was praying. And I know that um, she, of course, was there doing the duties of a wife in by his side and stuff. But it was very, very um, hard. I know that much. And um, but uh, boy, just good. Yesterday was good, wasn't it? Yesterday was good. And, it, and it, it was it was it was the Fernandez family again. They were ragging on one another. I mean, they don't let up on each other. And I said, you wait till he get his strength back, buddy. Praise God. But you're in Luke chapter number 12. I just wanted to share that with you, and um, we'll get introduced to some more people here later. But um, Luke chapter 23, if you would, please, verse 39. And one of the malefactors which was hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And he indeed justly, and we indeed justly, sorry about that, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man have done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Last verse, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Father, bless now, I pray, help us as we look at this thought, uh, the one side or the other. Dealing with these two thieves that were hanging there with Jesus Christ. One on the one side, one on the other side. And Lord, I just pray right now that, of course, we realize it was the cross in the middle, dear God, that was making a difference in those two lives. So help us to understand how important it is to live on one side or the other side. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people say it. Amen. Take your Bible, if you would, please, and go to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter number uh, 27. And, uh, boy, I thank God again for his word. I thank God that he loves us the way that he does. He doesn't have to, but he, he loves us. Amen. Amen. And notice what the Bible said here so you can understand. Because, you know, if you, if, you didn't, if you didn't see where I'm getting this actual thought from, you might be saying, well, you know, there's three crosses up there. And I know the Bible said it was one thief in Luke 23 talking and then another one talking. But in, in Matthew 27, look what the Bible says in verse number uh, 37. And set up over his head his accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Now watch this, verse 20, 38. Then there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. So here's what the Bible says. Here's Jesus Christ. He's got somebody on the right hand 
and he's got somebody on the left. One on the one side and one on the other side. And I think God did that on purpose because, you know, three crosses up there, they could have been just put up there and Jesus could have been on the outside. And you could have said you could be on the outside or on the inside. But God let us know that here's how our lives will be lived always on one side or the other side. So as we're looking at this thing here today, dealing with the crucifixion of Christ, the real question is this, what side are you living on? Now, when we look at the crosses, you can write this down, and many people have said this, and I'm not, this is nothing new, but when you look at the crosses, you see, first of all, in the middle, the cross of redemption. The cross of redemption, the cross where the price is being paid. But on the one side, you see the cross of rebellion. See, the cross where somebody who is just pushing him away and rejecting him, wanting nothing to do with him. But the other side, you see a cross of repentance. You say, preacher, what is that? Repentance is that word of repent means to change your mind. You'll find out and we, uh, that, that if you read this whole thing, this whole story, which is a true story, that both of the thieves were actually railing on him. But what happened was repentance happened on that cross. And he, start, he changed his mind about who Jesus was and who he was and what he deserved. You and I need to realize this. We're going to live on one side or the other. We're going to live on the side of rebellion or we're going to live on the side of repentance. Now, again, that doesn't mean we know everything. But once we find out something from the word of God, we're supposed to have a change of mind, which brings a change of heart, which brings a change in our lives. Somebody say amen. The question is, what side are you living on Jesus is in the middle matter of fact he's the one who died for our sins he died for our sins again you need to understand something here but he got one on the one side and one on the left the man who died for our sins is in the middle the man who is dying in sin is on one side and the one who's died to sin is on the other side where are you living at today are you living in sin or are you dying to sin See, this whole thing about the cross, many times what we do is we just look at it and say the sin was paid for. And by the way, thank God for the sin being paid for. But God saved us when it came to our sin so we can get rid of the penalty of sin and get rid of the power of sin. But God is saying, how about get rid of the practice of sin? Amen. Too often time what we do is we say, well, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. God said, I know you got grace, but shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Amen. What side are you and I going to live on? One side or the other side? Then God is trying to help you and I to know something here, that he did everything need to be done. What's that? To save us from our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Amen. The Bible said that God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. So we see the Savior but God is saying wait a minute now. I'm not looking at the Savior only today but I'm looking at the one side or the other side. So the question today is this here. Are we going to continue to live like a sinner or are we going to try to start acting a little bit like a saint? By the way, we can do it this way. Either you're a saint or you're an ain't. Which one? Are, come on, somebody. God is saying you and I need to realize that there's going to be a decision got to be made every day in our life. It started with our salvation decision, but how about a decision to live a sanctified life, a holy life, a life dedicated to God? So we're going to be on one side or the other side. Amen. Now, here's the thing about it. You and I need to just nail this thing down to where God has it, not to where the world has it. The world usually looks at things in three different categories. You got the Republicans, the Democrats, the Independents. Matter of fact, now you got the Libertarians. You got the other group and that group and the, all the other LGBTQ plus groups. Hey, come on, help me, somebody. In other words, they got all these different groups out there. You got the rich class, the poor class, the middle class. You got the short ones, the tall ones, the average ones. You got the good looking ones. I'm in that category. I, well, maybe there's only one right there. Amen. But God says, I want you to understand that everything for me is down to two categories. You're either saved or you're lost. When it comes to the end, you're either a sheep or you're a goat. And other people tell you, man, I don't like being called a sheep. Every time you preach about a sheep, a sheep don't have any sense. A sheep needs some, some direction. A sheep needs a shepherd. A sheep needs it. But guess what? A goat don't have any choice or any hope when it comes to the end. Amen. I'd rather be a sheep that don't have any sense than a goat on his way to a burning hell. Somebody say amen. 
So God is saying there's only two classes, the saved, the lost, the sheep, the goat, the righteous, the unrighteous. You are for me, he says, or you either against me. There is no middle. You can't sit on the fence. You can't live on both sides. You got to decide which side you're going to live on. There's a dividing line, and God says the choice is up to you. Just like on, on, when God says, here's the side of blessing, and here's the side of cursing. Yeah. This is not the side of let's just think about it. No, you're on the blessing or you're on the cursing. Come on with somebody. Yeah. So which side are you on? When the thieves, of course, are read about in this story today, God is saying, one is saying, you know what, if. And the other one is saying, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. Which side are you on today? Today, I hope today that you're on the right side. But don't think about it with just the thief on the cross dying and getting his sins dealt with. I'm hoping that we go beyond the cross. Thank God. Thank God there's a beyond the cross life. Thank God there's a beyond the cross where we can, where we can please God now where we weren't pleasing God. But God says, you're going to do one or the other. You're going to please me or you're not going to please me. You're going to live for me or you're not going to live for me. There is no middle ground in this thing. So I'm asking you today, where are you living at? Write some things down now on your outline real quickly. We got to go. First of all, it's his sinful condition. His who's sinful condition? The one who finally got it right. So you need to understand something. You don't just get it right because you say you want it right. You get it right because you meet the conditions of God saying getting it right. Amen. Amen. You're on one side, you're going to do it God's way. You're going to keep trying to do it your own way. You're going to try to do it by works, and you're going to accept God's grace through faith. Which way? Come on now. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so God is saying, you either come in my way, or you're going to try to do it your way. And if you do it your way, here's what God is saying. You won't get to go the way you want to go. There's only one way for those who are doing it their way, and that's not to heaven, that's to the burning hell. Yeah. Say, preacher, I don't like that kind of preaching. I don't like trying to preach it either. But I got to tell you, this is God's way of doing stuff. Yeah. So first of all, it's his sinful condition. Number two, are you still with me? Say, write this down. His simple confession. We'll be done here real quickly. His simple confession. And then number three, write this down. His saving conversion. His saving conversion. Boy, I tell you what, when you get on the right side, God said, I'll take care of it all for you now. So the question today is this here. Have, have, you, have you really taken a good look at the sinful condition that you were in before you got saved? So you can't move from this side to that side until you see where you are on this side. But there's only one or two sides you're going to live on. Because remember, this thief was also railing on him. This thief was also saying stuff. Matter of fact, do it this way. Write down Matthew 27, 44. The Bible says this. Are you with me now? The Bible says this in Matthew 27. Well, let me just start reading. Uh, yeah, not thir uh, uh, 44 should work. Write this down. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in their teeth. What did they cast? They were criticizing. They were insulting. They were mocking him. God is saying, as a matter of fact, you can write down the whole text, 39 through 44, but the Bible says in 44, the thieves also, and it didn't say the thief, it said the thieves. So they were both on this side, and if I keep messing it up, don't, don't, don't hold it against me now. I'm, I'm just preaching, I get excited, and I forgot which side to keep my hands on. But I know what side to put my life on, come on somebody. The Bible says the thieves also in a sinful condition, criticizing, insulting, mocking God. The Bible lets us know in Mark 15, 32. It says, let Christ, the king of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may, we may, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. We want to see it. Everybody watching, Brother Mike. And the thieves also up on that cross were saying, I want to see it too. I don't believe it either. Something, something not right if you're supposed to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords and the son of God. Something not right if you got to hang on that cross. But aren't you glad he stayed on the cross? Somebody say amen. Aren't you glad he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do it. But here's the truth of the matter here. The son, the sinner, the thief that got to the other side had to see his sinful condition before the situation changed. First of all, you need to understand something. He did not accept Jesus Christ's person. He was just like the rest. He didn't accept him. Number next, write this down. This is all under his sin. I'm not moving slow today. I'm moving fast. I hope you stick with me. You say, preach, you're always moving fast. No, I talk fast. I don't move fast all the time. Praise God. He, he didn't accept his person. Number two, he didn't acknowledge 
his purpose. What do you mean by that, preacher? The Bible says in Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. If he understood that, Brother Mike, if he understood that before he got this thing right, he wouldn't have been saying what he was saying. He wouldn't have been saying Gibby and speaking like the rest of them idiots around the cross. Preacher, why you call them idiots? The Bible said the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. And here's what they're saying. That can't be God. Matter of fact, he said in John 1, he said that he came to his own and his own received him not. I'm telling you, that is just totally out of your mind to be that way. But well, thanks be to God, even though he didn't acknowledge what he came for, he, Jesus, acknowledged why he came. Amen. Amen. Jesus did not come. Listen to me now. Jesus did not come. For you and I to have the best of life down here. Thank God he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But what if he don't give you what we call the best of life? What if he don't give you millions? Somebody said, well, I'll be happy with thousands. What if you don't get that? What if you got to live paycheck to paycheck? And what if sometimes you live and your money don't last throughout the month? How are you going to treat God or live for God then? You're going to be on one side or the other side. But he didn't come for all of that. He didn't come that you can have the best life so you can live in the best of houses or you can drive the best of cars. And God allows some of us to do that. But what was his purpose in coming? The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 12, he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Thank God he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity and the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed, amen. amen. He didn't accept him. He didn't acknowledge him. And truth of the matter is, I know he didn't anticipate the punishment that was coming. Because if he had anticipated the punishment that was coming, he would have understood the punishment he was going through right then. Nothing compared. Amen. Nothing compared. But guess what? He went from one side to the other side. How do you know that preacher? Because he said this here. Remember me when you come into your kingdom? In other words, there's got to be something better on the hey man. Something better. And God's trying to do something for us today to help us to understand sin messed up this world. Sin put us in the condition that we're in. Sin had folks on their way to a burning hell. But thank God there's something better on the other side for those who get saved. Whew. Thank God for that. Here's the problem in the world today. And this is why we got to be prayerful. We got to keep knocking. And we got to keep going. The Bible says in Romans 3.18. And think about the thieves on the cross and all those around. The Bible says there's no fear of God before their eyes. That's the one side. But thank God you can move to the other side. Thank God you don't have to hang out there. Amen, somebody. Number two, the simple confession. The simple confession. Man, I'm feeling good right now. Look, if you would please, in, in our text, Luke 23 and verse number 41. Luke 23 and 41. The Bible says, and we indeed, what? Justly. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. The simple confession, I'll give them to you real quickly. It's verses 40, verse 41 and also so 42. He said that, guess what? I realize I'm a sinner. <laughs> he said, I realize I'm a sinner. Becky, do you know what he just said? We haven't erred in life. I've sinned in life. You know, a lot of people, when you come to talk to them about salvation, many times they say, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. It's not about being bad as so-and-so. The fact of the matter is you are a sinner. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible lets us know that, 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 that sin entered the world and death by sin. And death passed upon all men because. So you and I can't look at somebody else and say, wait a minute. They are sinners, but I'm not a sinner. God is saying all of us are sinners. Amen. Every one of us have sinned and every one of us have messed up our lives before God. But I can see that old sinner. Boy, I, wish, I know he wished that the, our hymn book was around back then, Miss, Miss Sue. Because if it was around back then, he could sing like we sing. Yeah. There is a fountain filled with blood. Yeah. 
drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And sin is plunged beneath that flood. And they lose all their guilty stain. Second verse was written again, thinking about the thief. It said, the dying thief, oh, he rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Amen. Oh, he recognized he was a sinner. He recognized he needs something that he didn't have. And he recognized the one who had it for him. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So he realized he was a sinner. But he recognized, and everybody's got to do this, that Jesus is the Savior. He knows who he is. But you got to know who Jesus is. The Bible lets us know in verse 41 also, but this man. What man? This man, Jesus. What man? This man who did no wrong. The man, this man who doesn't deserve what we're going through. This man. He said, this man have done nothing amiss. The Bible lets us know he, he died for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Bible lets us know in 1 John that he was manifest to take away our sin, and in him there was no sin. Somebody say amen. amen. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ, God's son, did everything that needed to be done so you and I can go to a glorious heaven? Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he recognized the Savior, shall be saved. Acts, the Bible lets us know, Acts 16, 30, 31, that the jealous, they brought him out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And thy house. Now, and thy house don't mean that you believe and everybody in your house gets saved. And thy house means you believe, they believe, that one believe, that one believe, that one believe. Anybody in your house believe shall be saved. Somebody say amen. How do you know that, preacher? Well, I read the book of, 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 of Joshua, chapter number two, where they went to Rahab's house. And the story is told, if you go and read it, said that anybody that's in Rahab's house will be saved. You say, preacher, see there? Anybody in the house will be saved. No, you got to understand something. You got to believe and get to the house. Come on, somebody. You couldn't, you couldn't be a part of the family of Rahab and be outside. and get. You had to believe. You had to get in the house. Remember when the deaf angel passed over? Remember the deaf angel passed Everybody that was in the house under the blood. And when I see the blood, then I'll pass over you. Oh, you could have been out in the field and guess what? You'd have been dead as a doorknob. Somebody say amen. But thanks be to God when you recognize the Savior for yourself. Done, done, done. Amen. God takes care of it. Oh, he recognized he recognized the Savior. He realized he was a sinner. And then write this down. He requested salvation. He said, Preacher, why is that important? Do you know the Bible says the devil believes? But he ain't asking to be saved. <laughs> Matter of fact, devil no more Bible than most of us. But he's not asking to be saved. So here's what God is saying. When you ask to be saved, are you still with me? Say amen. Because look at verse 42. I just need to read it real quick so I can move on. He said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You say, wait a minute, preacher. What is that? The other guy on the other side, he just kind of over there said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. The other one on the other side said, you remember me, please. You remember. You got to request it for yourself. There's two thieves up there, but only one of them requested to be Remember, somebody say amen. amen. And God is letting you and I know that if we'll do what the Bible said, do believe and ask for it. God said he'll save us. Amen. So here's what I need you to get under this point as I close this point out. Ask, realize you deserve. This is a sad thing that many people don't want to accept. It. You and I deserve. I want to make sure I change that, Miss Mike, because I, I want you to say you deserve, but I deserve too. Amen. I really deserve. What's that? I deserve the wrath of God just like anybody else. I'm not going to labor it. I preached it a few weeks ago. I deserve the darkness. I deserve the despair. I deserve the death. I deserve all of the things that we talked about that Sunday that everybody deserves. And God is saying, you will never get saved. He said, we deserve this. 
But then next you got to believe that Jesus is the perfect son of God. Notice what he said. That we, we deserve what we're getting, but he hadn't done anything. And then number three, you need to re realize that you have a need for Jesus to save you. And only he alone can do it. And you must ask him alone to get it done. There's no other name given to a man whereby they must be saved. Acts 4 and verse number 12. Somebody say amen. Here's the good part so we can go home. The saving conversion. Verse 43, and Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today. That's a good shouting ground right there. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. I want you to just get this down because the one thing, I'm write this verse down, Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Titus 1, 2, what is that? In hope of eternal life is God that can not lie. Yeah. Cannot lie, promised before the world began. So preacher, what does that mean? Before it was even thought about. Right. You hear him always say before you was a twinkle in your mom and dad's eye. Yeah. But it goes even back farther than that. Right. Before there was ever a, a let there be light. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Before there was ever any waters and rivers and streams. Before there was ever any hills for man to climb and, and mountains for him to ski down. Hey, before there was any of that, God had already determined he was going to give man a savior. Amen. Aren't you glad that God did that before the foundation, after he made the foundation, and still with us on the foundation? And it's that way to the end of this foundation. God has promised that he'll save anybody that will come to him. Amen. Look at it, if you would, please. Saving conversion. How sure is it? How sure is it? Notice, if you would, please, in verse number 43. Jesus said unto him, what's that word? Verily. Verily I say unto thee. That word verily means truly. That word verily means like this. You can take it to the bank. That word verily means like this here. There won't be any hiccups, mess ups, or any of us having to let up. Somebody say amen. Amen. Matter of fact, let me just put it to you this way. Some of us will say there's some things in my life, husband and wives, that I haven't forgiven them for. Some will say there are some bosses that have fired me and still have not forgiven me. Some will say I got kids that have grown up now and my kids have not forgiven me. I don't know if they ever will, but let me put it to you like this. He said, verily, I say unto thee. In other words, truly, take it to the bank. I promise you, I ain't letting up. I ain't backing up. This is the way it is. Jesus said, I'll forgive you, and that's the way it's going to be. Amen. Again, that's the whole world out there that won't forgive. Whole world of people out there that won't get their hearts right. But thanks be to God that he ain't like me. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, surely, you have this thing. How sure was it? Verily is the word he used. How sudden is it? <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today. Hey, guess what? If you're not saved, you can be saved. Today, amen. Hey, my today was back in 1967, but guess what? That was my today. Brother Mike, your today happened in Gulfport, Mississippi, but thank God you found it today, amen. And give me guess what? Your today was in this year, maybe two years ago, and then guess what? It was the same today, like my today, like his today, and like that old man Tony Cruz today, amen. Praise God. That man was going to Bible college before I even knew what school was. And I'll just leave it at that. Amen. But you want to know something? Thank God for today. Thank God it happens the moment you come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And watch this. Thank God the day you die, you don't have to go through purgatory. You don't have to take and pay your way out of anything. But you get to go be right with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Bible says absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory because great things he have done. Thank God for today. Listen to this here. We sing these songs, but sometimes I say we don't get it. Because in that to God be the glory, that one verse says this here. It says, oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. To every believer, the promise of God. Get this, the vilest offender who truly believes. That moment <laughs> from Jesus, a pardon received. 
I sure hope we just stop singing these songs. Matter of fact, for some, they've gotten old. They're not old to me. Thank God the moment I trusted him, I got saved. How sure was it? Truly, verily. How sudden was it? Today. How spiritual was it? <laughs> what you mean by that, preacher? How spiritual was it? Guess what? Listen to me now. How spiritual was it? Shall thou be with me in paradise? Amen. Deliverance. The destiny. The duration. Let me put it to this way. What I'm really trying to say, the eternity of it. Amen. Amen. God is saying you and I need to realize that he took care of everything we needed done for us spiritually today. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, Amen. I need you to understand, you're not on the other side. Amen. You're on the one side. Yeah. And you can move from the one side to the other side. Amen. But let me just tell you something here. You got to realize you could be so close today. Right. But when it comes to the end, if you don't trust Christ, you'll be so far. Preach, how can you be so close and yet so far? There's this dividing line called the Great Continental Divide. Runs from Alaska to the tip of it down to South, uh, South America. This Continental Dividing Line, they say you can have two drops of water. Watch this, Ms. Becky. Two drops of water. One fall on this side. One fall on the other side. You want to know something? Those two drops of water don't end up in the same place. Right. It's two drops of water. They go from that, that mountain peak and they go down to some maybe stream and maybe some river. But when it all ends up, think about it. One drop ends up in the Pacific Ocean and the other one in the Atlantic Ocean. You're not going to tell me that's a long ways apart? I just finished driving from Texas and together that was 24 hours. You know what God said? Some of us are saying, I'm so close, but if you fall on the wrong side, you'll never make it to the other side. He tells us in Luke chapter number 16, there's a gulf fixed so that you can't pass from one side to the other side. You want to know something, what this message is really all about? This message is about you and I deciding to help others to fall on the right side. You're on the right side. Let's help others get to the right side. Amen. This message is in case you say, well, I don't really feel like doing it. Remember this here, that if you don't help people to get to the right side and they fall on the wrong side, they don't get a chance to get back to the other side. Amen. They got to go to a burning hell for all eternity. Yeah. They got to stay there with thirst and they got to stay there with torment and they got to stay there with the memories of what they lost. You and I need to say, hey, I want to help somebody get to the other side, amen. But I don't want to see anybody have to go through what God has already done to save them from. Can I ask you a question? First of all, have you made the transition to come to salvation from the one side to the other side? Have you realized who you are, sinner? Have you recognized who he is, a savior? And have you made requests to him to save you because you realize you can't save yourself? That's where it starts, getting you from one side to the other side. Can I ask you another question here? Have you, have you, have you gotten from one side to the other side now? And again, this is not to do with salvation. Amen. But you and I now belong to him. Yes. This body is not our own. We've been bought with the price, therefore glorify God in our body and our spirit, which are God's. So have you gotten from the one side to the other side by way of sanctification? Thank God for salvation, but what about sanctification? What about being holy because he is holy? What about him in life now that's pleasing in his sight? And then let me ask you the question, have you gone from the one side to the other side when it comes to your service? Have you decided to date? I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to be just a spectator, but I'm going to be a, come on, a servant of the Lord. I'm going to be a soldier in the army of God. It's time to go from the one side to the other side. 
Can I just keep on going just a second? Not only with your salvation and sanctification and being a, a service for the Lord, how about going from one side to the other side in stewardship? Amen. See, some people, hey, come on, help me now. Don't go, don't go dead on me now. Come on. It was all right. We were just hollering about being saved. But it's time to go from one side to the other side. God says, I want you to take and help this church to go forward. And we do that through tithes and offerings. Are you from one side to the other side? Wait a minute. One last one, if you go from one side to the other side and saying, I want to be a soul winner for Jesus. Amen. Have you gone from one side or do you not care? People are lost and dying and going to burn it. I want to move from one side to the other side and soul winning. I want to do a better job at it. Preacher, how, 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 how good is good enough for God? Well, let me just tell you something here. If we get started, it's better than where we were. I want to go from one side. To the other side, how about you? Somebody say amen. Father.